classes at both Eastfield and Mountain View College will open on schedule Monday, September the 14th. Because of the crippling strikes called by the Carpet Layers Union, the facilities will not be in the state of readiness which we expected. The result will be temporary, and get that temporary, reduction in the effectiveness of the educational program and an expenditure of additional public funds during the period of improvision. However, the district and its personnel are dedicated to opening the college on schedule to fulfill the commitment to the community and to the more than 6,000 young people who are expected to be served by these new colleges. The additional expenditures will relate to rentals, uh, double moving of materials that would not have been necessary had we done this as planned. Has pre-enrollment at the schools been affected by the two strikes now? I can only speculate on that because uh, you really can't prove or disprove it. In my own mind, I am satisfied that uh, Mountain View has been affected a good bit because this job has been uh, behind and we've been playing catch up on it. About uh, Mr. Borland reaching for a wrench. What happened there? There was a wrench in the floorboard, but uh, after he was shot, it was still in the floorboard. In other words, did, did he actually reach down for the wrench or was there? I don't know. I was looking at the man coming through with a gun. Fort Worth voters have approved $33,350,000 of a $38.8 million capital improvements bond issue. Two proposals amounting to $5,450,000 were soundly rejected. The proposals were for park and recreation projects and airport improvements at Meacham Field. Most observers feel the rejection of the park and recreation proposal was directly attributable to the recent controversy over activities surrounding hippies in Trinity Park. Newsman Jay Lewis talked with Park and Recreation Director Charles Campbell about the Park and Recreation defeat. Mr. Campbell, what is the defeat of the Park and Recreation proposition going to do to the Park and Recreation Department? Well, it won't completely stop the department because we still have many projects we are in the process of completing from our 1965 bond. It won't leave us without uh, things to do and things that need to be done. Uh, down the road, of course, I think it can be more of a problem because uh, there are so many things that were in this bond issue that I, I felt were really vital to our city's recreational needs. Both city and chamber of commerce officials were predicting passage of all five proposals and were expecting upwards of 20,000 voters to cast their ballots for the future of Fort Worth. As it turned out, less than 16,000 votes were cast. Over a dozen civic organizations with an aggregate membership of over 20,000 endorsed the bond issue. Some apparently gave only lip service to the action improvements bond issue. Some councilmen are now talking about another bond issue to re-include the two defeated proposals, plus perhaps the deleted $7.9 million central library proposal and possibly five or $6 million for a supplementary transportation system. The vocal minority has spoken, and the silent majority runs true to form. Art Sinclair, Channel 8 News on the Move, Fort Worth. Chief, why haven't the closing hours for the city parks been enforced up till now? Well, the law didn't become effective until last night, and uh, we didn't think uh, last night would be the proper time to uh, go to the park. Uh, the law will be enforced, but uh, without being uh, uh, indignant, we will do it at our convenience.
present, uh, we, if we desire any surplus from the state of Texas, must compete against the general public in a bidding action at an auction and trust that uh, we can bid against the public. And of course, this creates an ill will that uh, the counties or other entities come in and compete with private industry. Well, we changed our offense a little from last spring. We put in a new drop back series and uh, we're gonna run the veer a little more this year. And uh, along with a lot of options and I think it's uh, fits our personnel real well. Uh, we've got real fine speed in the backfield which would uh, help our options quite a bit and uh, real fine receivers to go along with our drop back pass series. Coach Hagan says if you have exceptional acceleration, you're a heck of a runner with tremendous balance and your arm has improved this year. You didn't throw much in McKinney. How do you feel about your passing game at this moment? Well, when I came to Rice, like you said, I didn't throw much in uh, high school. And uh, the past uh, few years, I've tried to strengthen my arm. My arm wasn't quite as good a shape as it should have been to be a college passer. And especially last summer, getting ready for this season, I've tried to work real hard to strengthen up my arm and have it ready for the season. Which team would you like to beat more than any other in the conference? Well, I never have liked Texas too well, and I'd kind of like to beat them. I think it would be safe to say, Mr. Brown, that the teachers could do a more effective job. And those teachers that have been engaged by the outside firms coming into our district have provided them an opportunity to do more effective teaching through improved teaching methodology, through the uh, development of new materials, and other sources which will make the teacher more effective in the classroom. I don't think so. I don't think that Dallas teachers have to prove that they can do a good job. I think that they have been doing a good job through the years, and uh, the results show this. The reason for, our, for the failures with some students is the fact that we have too many students to deal with. Uh, I visited uh, classrooms this fall that are overcrowded. Teachers just cannot do the job that they're supposed to do with uh, 35 and 40 children in a classroom. You told me earlier what you thought of guaranteed performance contracts. Uh, do you really feel it is gimmickry? Yes, I do feel that it's a type of educational gimmickry that uh, has been dreamed up in Washington. The entire learning process in our schools today includes all of the activities that you mentioned. Many teachers, of course, volunteer for these. Many of these activities are extra pay for extra duty. And I think that by and large, if you examine the workload of the teachers, it pretty much equalizes out so that you know each teacher has a just and fair load for their contract salary.
Today marked final rehearsals in tonight's Miss United Fun pageant, which will be telecast live on Channel 8 immediately following tonight's news. Channel 8 news cameras followed our own candidate, Becky Higgins, through instructions and script explanation for the pageant. Then the candidates practiced walking through the show tonight. With them will be the cast of Sing In 70, the repertory players at the Six Flags Southern Palace. Just moments ago, the candidates got their final instructions. When this newscast goes off the air, we'll take you live to Six Flags Over Texas for that Miss United Fund contest. Bill Reynolds, Channel 8 News on the move. We figured the police present at the park last night might have caused an incident. It could have. Uh, we anticipated that uh, the spectators would be uh, about as uh, uh, strong in numbers as the uh, people in the park, so uh, we didn't uh, attempt to uh, go in there last night. You didn't go into Trinity Park. Have any of the other park curfews been enforced? No, we didn't uh, inspect all the parks. Do you have a time set uh, for enforcement? Do you have any idea of when the enforcement will start? No, I don't. I'm not going to set a specific day or a specific time that we will uh, enforce this law. I assure you we'll enforce it. But uh, to uh, put on a show, uh, we're not in this type of business, and uh, I don't think it would be proper for the police to do this. Worth Mayor R.M. Sharkey Stovall analyzed last night's bond issue. I think all five propositions were vital to the city of Fort Worth. Uh, we had a total of approximately 16,200 votes cast. Uh, the Park and Recreation proposition uh, lost by 1,900 votes. The uh, Aviation proposition lost by approximately 2,100 votes. My personal opinion is the fact that had we had as many as 20,000 voters uh, show up to vote today, that all five propositions would have passed. We have approximately 125,000 registered voters in the city of Fort Worth as of today, and only 16,000 of them showed up at the polls. This could be in proportions of several million dollars to the counties themselves. Take as an example, a small county that doesn't have readily available to it um, the revenue they need to purchase a heavy piece of equipment. Some of this equipment costs as much as thirty and forty thousand uh, dollars. If it desires, if they desire to get something from the state, they could pick this up at a very reasonable figure and possibly invest a small amount into repairs and have a piece of equipment to do a job for them, a road piece of equipment, a dozer, or something of this nature, at a very reasonable figure. And this way, some of the smaller counties, more especially, would, uh, would reap many benefits, and it would reach into the millions of dollars if it's handled, like I suggest. Yes, uh, a toll bridge has been considered, and the members of the Turnbike Authority have discussed it with the Highway Department. Uh, the Highway Department feels, however, that since they have already built the roads up on either side of the lake, that it, it's, a, it's a project that should be completed by the toll road, I mean, by the Highway Department rather than the toll authority. The only, the only real reason to, to have the toll authority build it at all would be a matter of time. And we feel that the highway department will build it within the time that it should be built by the toll authority. Didn't really notice that he did reach for the right. ranch. Now, what, what about uh, obscene gestures? There was. The officer said that there were some obscene gestures made. Uh, I wasn't aware of any. Mr. Warren didn't say anything to me you know, about anybody being behind us, beside us, or anything. As far as I know, he was looking straight ahead. I'm rather optimistic in spite of the fact that it has been reported to me that the voter turnout has been very light so far this morning. Uh, normally, uh, 
during bond elections, uh, we have about five to six, six thousand uh, so-called uh, professional uh, againers or in opposition to any bond election. If we can get a sufficient number of people uh, within the area of 20,000 voters, I think that we will carry all five propositions. How about the absentee voting? Was it lighter than usual or heavier? The absentee voting is a little light compared to uh, absentee voting in uh, previous bond elections. We feel that there are other methods of increasing city revenue that could be utilized to provide the necessary funds for the proposed expanded budget. Other than again raising the taxes of homeowners and business, well, let's not give an employee a raise on one hand and take it back and increase property taxes on the other. Remember, many of our citizens are fixed income groups who can ill afford an increase in property taxes. That a closed minded city government was being operated in Dallas, and that I was from Missouri and could not believe this. I hope these good folks on the city council will show these good Dallas citizens that their assumptions were incorrect by considering the practical proposal that a property tax is submitted at this meeting. It concluded, I'm not know Mr. Chatty and Mr. McDonald's out here, that it concluded, it concluded, ladies and gentlemen. Mr. Mayor, on behalf of the tens of thousands of Dallas citizens, I plead with you, in the name of the Lord, to consider the proposal submitted tonight, which will secure the necessary revenue for our fine police and fire department, and will give them their full wages without increasing property taxes. Otherwise, much more of are the taxpayers at home. Thank you, God bless you all. and give your name to solemnly swear that I will support faith and allegiance to the same that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same that I take this obligation
Carlos are not receiving fair and equitable representation in these dealings? I think the offers that are made to South Dallas uh, property owners uh, are made in good faith and uh, and uh, with the uh, appraised values as set by uh, land appraisers in the city. But I think there has been a great injustice done generally the people in the South Dallas area with the kind of appraised values that the real estate uh, business has come up with. I'm not sure it's exactly like in this USA pageant. I don't think so. I think you're judged mainly just on your personality and your ability to get along well with people. You don't have to worry about bathing suits and evening gowns right. and But it's just to be very sincere. And if you know, I think the girl will win who feels the most inside of her for this whole project. And if you have a way of communicating that to people, which is what you have to be doing all year, that's all I know to say is just be sincere in your speech. Which would you rather have, men judges or women? Women can be catty, it's true, but they also can look for things in a woman that a man might tend to overlook and go just on a beauty aspect rather than some of the other features a girl might have. The women can pick more or less the girl next door and the man will pick a glamorous type chick, so it's kind of a good combination. 